Hello again from the Farmer on the Wall. This has been three weeks since my last update. I thought I'd do another update here. Chia hit 35 a little while ago, so I cashed out a bunch and got some upgrade money. Uh, you can see here the standard Chia Farmer using the standard Chia Farming software has not changed much. It is, however, using a little bit more power. I got spikes up to 30. Uh, later on I'll talk about why that's happening. Uh, and then we move over to our compressed. This is using Mad Max Gigahorse software, which compresses or deconstructs the plot. I'm running about almost uh, 10,000 plots on this now, so it's almost a petabyte on its own with the compressed part, but not quite there. The one thing you'll notice is this USB connection I added. It's kind of a test. You can see here it's pulling power from SATA. It's just a 12-volt power source runs down into this adapter that lets me have two SATA drives for one USB drive. You can see that runs all the way back to the motherboard there. So I ran this about a week uh, just to try it out, see what happens. It's pretty stable. Nothing bad happened. So since I had that extra cash, I went ahead and went three-dimensional here. I got a whole USB wall now. This has the same 18 terabyte Exos drives that were on sale for I think 180 each. So pretty big investment, but uh, the USB seemed to work pretty well, and my issue was SATA cables are only about a meter long, so you can't get them that much longer. You have to go um, ex or external SATA. That never worked out well for me, so this USB attempt so far is working pretty well. You can see I got top three sets of drives all filled up here, and I'm working on filling this bottom one. Uh, they're pretty quick. They uh, don't cost a lot. A link to the adapter is like 20 bucks, so lets me expand out a lot more than just the distance SATA would have me set up so you can see here this is uh, becoming quite the beast compared to the uncompressed one this is just sitting around waiting for Chia to release the official compressed plot protocol they haven't done it yet they're still working on it once they do this will probably turn into a giant tree as well but this one went ahead and expanded because Gigahorse I can already plot compressed plots and under 10 minutes, so I'll just keep filling them up. As long as Chia stays around 35, I'll keep cashing out and popping more on there. So one word of caution I will say about the USB wall is, you can see over here, I've got um, 10 drives across five adapters. So that's quite a lot of watts uh, that's pulling, and then when I expand over here, it's gonna do even more. I attempted, you can see over here, this one is using that SATA connector that I mentioned, and that's only pulling the watts for two drives, which is fine. But if I were to try and get that over here and pull all these drives, power needs, from one SATA connector, that would not be wise. The heat alone would probably cause a fire. So what I did instead was, initially I had, um, they make adapters for electric guitar pedals that match this. You can actually daisy chain them, so I could have gone up uh, one, two, three, four, five, all in one line. But I figured that would be too hot too. These come with their own AC adapters. So even though I was excited to power them off the PC power supply, I went ahead and used each adapter. And you can see what I'm doing is just combining them all down. Uh, their own, their own separate lines. And then they run into a giant cluster of adapters plugged into the um, UPS. So they're still powered up all the time. Um, they just draw from the adapter, not from this. So this number, this uh, power number isn't um, accurate anymore across all drives since these are obviously getting power from the UPS directly, but I figured that was a lot safer than starting a fire in my house. So if you do attempt to do this USB wall, which is a lot easier than setting up all these uh, SATA connectors and uh, drives, I will admit, um, just be sure that you watch out that you don't cause a fire running all this stuff. The USB uh, hub itself isn't even powered, so it doesn't need it because this gets power from the AC lines. So. That is one caution that I want to throw. If you decide to go the separate USB wall to complement your SATA and extended PCI SATA adapter wall, I cannot wait until this thing gets totally ridiculous. Somebody mentioned that this might be loud. These are all passively cooled. There's nothing cooling these drives except air. The only two fans I have running are the power supply, which actually you can see turns off occasionally, and the CPU fan. That's the only two fans I have per system that's actively making noise. And if I shut up here, all you're going to hear is some drive actuations. Every once in a while, that's it. It's very quiet. 
This is a very quiet, it's just because it's passively cooled. If I had a bunch of uh, NAS units in here blowing air across them, that would be ridiculously loud. But this thing is silent. And now for the RDP portion of the video where we remote into the farmers. This is the uncompressed farmer on the left. Uh, but I am using the GPU as I mentioned. This is that recompute server that I talked about that uh, Mad Max created. It is receiving requests from the compressed farmer for decompression or reconstruction of the plot. And you can see over here the integrated GPU is actually doing something now. The last video this wasn't using any of its memory. It wasn't spiking at all. But now the compressed farmer has access to load balance between its G uh, GPU and this GPU. So it's able to make requests to it and actually use this GPU, which I think is pretty cool. And you can see the C7 plot compression requests from 216, which is the compressed server, are coming over pretty regular. And that's given the spikes every time it has something to decompress. Uh, the processor, again, is doing nothing because there's nothing to do over here. It's a decompressed uh, plot machine. Or, I'm sorry, yeah, normal standard compressed plot machine. I am hoping eventually to turn this into a compressed plot. Chia, the official um, provider of here, is supposed to provide compressed plots relatively soon. They're still working on it. It's not a priority. Their priority is making sure that uh, Chia is a viable uh, cryptocurrency. So that's their focus, but they also know that compressed plots exist and they're trying to provide it for everybody instead of having to use the solution from um, Mad Max that he provided, which works well. While I'm on this server, I thought I would mention somebody had said that I was um, providing my private key, or I'm sorry, public key and public uh, puzzle hash, and all that's fine. When you are farming Chia, you make sure, see all these little spikes here? Every time I get to one Chia, I'm sending that to my cold wallet. So this is my hot wallet. This is the wallet that I farm with. It receives payments from the pool. You can see here I got a pool payment. This was a win that I had. When you're pooling, you get a quarter Chia instead of two. That's the downside of pooling. But the upside is you get regular payments. So you can see every day I get a payment of about, I'm getting up to almost half a Chia a day just from farming into this pool. But you never want to let your Chia sit in your hot wallet. You want to get that out of there, sent to the cold wallet. The only difference is cold wallet is something I'm not actively using. I have the um, mnemonic written somewhere, I don't even look at it, and I send everything there. Every once in a while I check the balance, verify that it's still there. That's where I save all my Chia. This farming wallet, don't keep anything in here. There was a situation where um, somebody gave a download for the database you need to run Chia. People downloaded it and it burned in and hacked out the information needed and stole a whole bunch of Chia from people. It was pretty sad. So if you are farming Chia, be sure you do not keep your money in your hot wallet. Always send that over to a cold wallet. So we've magically transported to the compressed plot server. The compressed plot server, you can see, also has a recompute server running. And this is taking requests from localhost because the local machine is requesting decompression from this recompute server on its own machine, as well as the one from the uncompressed farmer on the other one. So they both have a recompute server running. They're both taking requests to decompress plots and um, using the integrated GPU on both machines. And I'll show you why that's important. On this is my pool page. This tracks my partials that I send. Here is an instance where when you are actively plotting to a drive, you are sending 250 megabits, at least with the Exos X18 drives that I use, 250 megabits to that drive. When a plot request comes up for any plot on that drive, it's fighting to get access time to get one read back. This took 35 seconds because whatever plot I was trying to find, it couldn't get back in time because I was actively plotting to it. That's kind of one of the downsides of plotting to a drive that you are also reading from or farming from. But I don't care because it's only one or two plots and I can deal with it. But this is before I had both integrated GPUs running. This was a single integrated GPU on that one compressed farm. And you can see I'm at 20 seconds or less here. Whenever I added that second GPU and load balance between the two, it dropped significantly. I'm under 10 seconds for everything. I'm even hitting into the greens. I love the pirate uh, language they have on space pool. It's amazing. So hasty is the ones you want to have. That's down here, uh, the greens that are under 5 seconds. It will accept anything under 30, except this one obviously was over. 
And again, you're still going to have these outliers because I am actively plotting to a few drives, and those drives are not able to read a plot nearly as fast as they should be able to, but the vast majority can, and they're good. For comparison, my uncompressed plot, you can see everything's under three seconds. There is no computation that needs to happen. It picks up the plot, sends the partial, it's good to go. So this is a huge difference. And if I got a discrete GPU instead of just two integrated load balancing GPUs, this would obviously be much lower. But under 10 seconds is fine with me. And uh, I don't feel like investing another GPU just yet. I probably will have to eventually, but that's more power that it's going to take up. And I got a big old honking GPU. I got to stick off one of my motherboards somehow. Or I might mount to the side. I don't know. That'll be another video. But back to the um, actual server, you can see the GPU is again is spiking pretty regular. The CPU on here is not working that much harder, but it does have stuff to do because it does have to um, organize the decompression and everything. The uh, farmer on this one though, I'm sitting at 588 now of physical drive space. But because of that compression, the C7 compression, which gives me about 36% more, I'm representing almost 800 terabytes, so I'm getting close to a petabyte just on this one machine. But between this 800 petabyte and the 420 on the uncompressed, I'm sitting at a pretty decent amount of uh, space to plot. And that's why I'm able to get the uh, payments out that you saw earlier. So these are the USB drives that I've added. Uh, anything after the C drive. Because the way Drive Manager works, the NVMe drive is the last one on the list, and then the USB drives pick up. So all of these drives are full, except for these two are getting plotted to. You can see, this is USB 3.2, that adapter I have. So I got the full 250 megabit available to me for that Exos X18 drive, which is nice. I can mount them and then plot to them over to the network. You can see the 2.5 gig network uh, is able to take that plot, then the drive is able to take it and throw it on there as well. Uh, what's weird about that pub that I have that I put up there, only two of the ten um, ports are USB 3. You can see here these three drives are only USB 2. The one that I'm actively plotting to I stuck on the USB 3, which is fine. You don't need any faster than USB 2. So I just kept the hub because you don't. there's no reason to have 3.2 unless you're plotting to it. Once the plots are there, USB 2 is plenty fast to get the plots off uh, back to it. But I did mention that I had a power um, issue. I wanted to initially power these adapters off the PSU, the power supply unit that is feeding the motherboard and all the other drives. But when I did that, I used a guitar pedal adapter, which was just like a cord with a whole bunch of different DC um, plugs. And I plugged that in and I ran it. Uh, like I said, initially I ran that one adapter with the two drives off the power supply and that was fine. That went for a week, no issue. When I tried plugging in more than one, I started getting these. And you want to watch for these if it's uh, not the disk identifier. This is nonsense. Um, you can fix that, actually, but it's not worth it. This right here, the logical block cannot be read. What I found out was it just wasn't enough power getting to each individual adapter, so it was browning out power. And uh, here's my... I use REFS, which is Resilient File System. It's kind of the follow-up for NTFS, which is the standard Windows format. Don't ask me why I'm using Resilient File System for throwaway plots because it's you absolutely do not need this much. Mostly it's just because I'm fun and it's like, why not give it a shot? However, if you do use REFS, be aware that Linux can't read this, not natively. So you're kind of stuck with Windows if you go REFS route. I've already committed to it, so I'm kind of sticking with REFS for everything just because it's fun. It's a new file system. And um, to be fair, I did have an old 8 terabyte drive that had a bunch of plots on it, and I was able to um, salvage those with REFS. It kind of keeps like a extra set of um, parity bits that you can use if you have to recover files. So again, not necessary, but the point was, if you see all this warning in your event viewer, you want to check your system log pretty regularly. If you see these, there's a problem. So that's when I switched off using that shared power from the power supply unit to just each, each individual power adapter powers each adapter. And they throw it in the box anyway, so you might as well just plug it in and use it. It's a lot safer than having this, because anytime this happens, it's a plot that I can't access and I lose a partial. So you can see it since then I've had nothing. This is, I think right now it's 1 o'clock I'm editing since then. It's just updates and everything. So keep an eye on your event viewer. Um, and then again, you only need USB 2 
every time I'm done plotting a drive, I'm just going to switch it over a USB 2 port until I run out and then keep a couple on this USB 3. But still able to copy the plots over, no problem, to those uh, adapters, able to move it out much farther from the motherboard. Um, I got plenty of network speed to bring all this over, so hopefully by the next video I will have a full petabyte on this compressed farmer, and if I'm lucky, I'll be able to take my uncompressed farmer to compressed. The goal being to switch everything over to the official Chia compressed plots because uh, Mad Max takes a bit of a cut. I think it's like 1 or 2% every win you have, and that's his payment for coming out with a uh, plotter that can plot in 128 gigs of memory. I'm limited right now because my main plotter only has uh, 128 gigs. I don't have 256 for the official plotting yet. So back at the plotter machine, not much has changed. This is mostly the same. The GPU is GPUing and the disk is disking. Um, I have got up to 2.6 petabytes written to this NVMe. Again, you can absolutely kill these plotting drives because as long as you don't uh, remove power from them, they'll work perfectly fine. So I'm going to continue to kill this drive as I'm stuck with my 128 um, gig memory. That's what this machine's maxed out at. I did not want to buy a 256 gig workstation just to plot until the official Chia comes out with a 128 gig plotter. That's the current limitation right now. Again, the goal is to plot in the official Chia plots uh, and then switch all the farmers to official as well. But since I'm able to make a 128 gig memory plot in less than 10 minutes, uh, you can see it's still cranking away. I'm just going to keep on plugging them in and throwing up drives. And now that I've achieved a point where the amount of chia I'm bringing in is able to pay for more stuff, it's only a matter of time before my entire house is covered with friggin' chia drives. So stay tuned for uh, that exciting development coming soon.